Hey everyone, I have a highly anticipated tutorial to show you today. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the seamless parallax transition using Adobe After Effects. I've used this transition in sports videos, personal projects, and yes, even weddings. I'll link those projects below so you can check them out. Now let's dive into After Effects so I can show you the secret sauce. So we have two clips here. We have our mountain clip, which is orbiting around towards the right. And then we have our beach clip, which is orbiting around towards the left. Now, in order to pull off this effect, you need to have two things. First and foremost, you need to make sure that both shots that you're using have some sort of sky in it. So right here with our mountain clip, you see we have a good amount of sky with the blue. And then obviously with our wider shot and our beach clip, we have a ton of sky to work with. So that's the first thing. The second thing you need to make sure of is, is that your shots are going opposite directions. Because when we parallax things, we want to have it go into the direction in which the shot's moving. Otherwise, it's going to look a little weird. So if you have two shots that are going the same direction, but you really want to use them, I'll quickly show you how to change the direction. The first thing we're gonna do is right click on our beach clip and go to transform, flip horizontal. And right away, it'll go the opposite direction. But our framing changes. So let's change that back and say, we wanna keep the same framing, but we wanna change the direction. Another tip we can do is right click, go to time and go to time reverse layer. So all we're doing is changing the timing of the layer itself, but we're maintaining the framing of what we have. So those are two simple ways to change the direction of your clip. Now it's time to get started with the tutorial. All right, so now what we wanna do is highlight our clips and pre-compose them. So we're gonna pre-compose here and call this transition working. We're going to jump into this folder here. Now what I'm gonna do is actually change the size of our composition. So I'm gonna to go to composition, composition settings, and then I'm going to double the height. And then I'm going to bring our mountain clip to the bottom and our beach clip to the top. We're going to change the direction of our beach clip by clicking R for rotation. And then we're going to type in 180 to change the full direction. All right, now from here, we need to actually color match the clips a little bit better. The mountain shot was taken during the day and our beach shot was taken during sunset. So I really like the sunset and that warmer look. So what I'm gonna to do to color match with our mountain clip is I'm gonna add a Lumetri color and I'm going to go to a temperature and bring this up to like, let's say 20. That's starting to look a lot better. We'll keep it there. And now we need to decide which sky do we wanna keep. The mountain sky looks nice, but it's a little bit boring, whereas the beach sky has a lot more detail. There's sun, it's during sunset. It just looks a lot cleaner, so we're going to keep that sky. Next thing I'm going to do is duplicate my mountain clip. I will bring this bottom one below, and I will just hide it for now. So now what we need to do is decide which sky we want to keep. Our mountain sky looks nice, but it's a little bit boring, whereas our beach sky has a lot more details taken during sunset, so that's the one we're going to keep. So I need to key out my mountain clip sky. So I'm going to click on our mountain clip and add a color key. And then I'm going to click our sky and I'm going to bring up our tolerance. And right away you see it starts to, to work, but at the same time, we're compromising a little bit of the edges of our mountains and then our fishermen. So we need to get some of that detail back. So I'm gonna make some further adjustments here to see how it looks. I wanna get rid of all the sky. And for all these other details, we'll be getting some of these back, so don't worry about that. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is go back to full screen and we're gonna bring our beach clip down behind our mountains. Now it doesn't have to be exactly behind the mountains. We have a little bit of black space here. That's totally okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is actually create a mask around our beach clip. And then I'm going to feather this out, let's say by 100. Give it, maybe do 200, that looks good. We're gonna go back to our original mountain clip here and I'm gonna add a key cleaner because I just wanna pick up some of our keying that we did a little bit. Just bring some of this detail back. All right, this is looking better. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna show our bottom mountain clip now. And right away, you see our sky and our fishermen are back in full detail, but we're seeing a little too much blue. So rather than trying to make further adjustments to our beach clip and the mask that we have, I'm gonna to go to our bottom mountain clip and I'm just gonna bring up our temperature a little bit. And right away, now it's really starting to blend in really well with our beach sky. So this is the little bit of that secret sauce in terms of compositing and bringing these clips together. It's really exciting stuff. So now I'm gonna go back to full screen. I'm going to bring all of my clips up to the center of our composition as best as I can. And now what I need to do is actually get rid of these black bars by changing the size of our composition again. So I'm gonna go back to composition settings and just drop this down until we don't see any black bars. All right, we are in the clear. All right, so the last thing I wanna do here is actually adjust our beach clip. I know it starts off a little bit slower and our mountain clip is moving a lot faster as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is take our beach clip and I'm just gonna slide this up a little bit because I know the speed picks up. And now the pacing's starting to look a lot better. We're good with our working composition, so we're gonna click out of here and jump back into our render composition. And right now, this is what we have. Uh, I'm going to change the direction of this and align this towards the bottom. So we see just our mountain clip to start. 
and you can see right away from our compositing that the sky is completely replaced. We have full detail with our fishermen and the outlines of our mountains. So our compositing worked really well. Now it's time for the fun part, the actual parallax effect. So I'm gonna go to one second here, stretch this out a bit. I'm going to pull up position, scale and rotation. I'm going to separate the dimensions of our position. I'm gonna set keyframes for everything. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is go down to five seconds and then I'm gonna set keyframes for everything. And then I'm going to change the rotation to 180. All right, so here's what we have so far. Now, this looks pretty boring for a few reasons. Obviously, the animation's slow and we have these ugly black bars. We're gonna take care of these. So first thing that I wanna do is go to like our halfway point, which is three seconds, and we're going to center this up a little bit. We wanna keep our horizon centered throughout the entire time. And that's also gonna get rid of some of this black space to start. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our end and I'm actually gonna change our scale to like, let's say 120. And right now we have a little bit of sky that's showing. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. It's starting to look better. So here's what we have. Now what I wanna do is add some easing. So I'm gonna highlight all of our starting keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant, ease out, and go to all of our end keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, ease in. And then with our center keyframe, I'm going to click F9 for easy easing. So here's what we have now. All right, this is really starting to come to life. It looks really cool. The last thing we need to do is get rid of these ugly black bars. So there's a few things we could do. One, we can go up to the middle of here and we could scale this up a good bit and then you know have things scale in and then scale out like that. That's one way to going about it, but I don't really like that method. So I'm gonna show you guys another trick. We're gonna go here and see where our black bars are at its worst. That's about right here. I'm going to click on our layer here and I'm gonna add a motion tile. I'm gonna change our output width and height to 300. And then from there, I'm going to mirror our edges. And this is how you make an epic parallax transition in Adobe After Effects. Let me know what you think in the comments about today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.